Okay, today I'm going to be talking about altering your bowl on the wheel. There's several different altering techniques. I'll go over a few. This one's going to be altering the rim. Go ahead and open your hole like normal. I'm gonna pull a slightly curved bottom, pulling straight towards six o'clock. This first bowl I'm gonna make is gonna be a wide flared bowl. But I'm still gonna be collaring the material up and in. Remember there's a curved foot. My left hand is raised up just a little bit, so I wanna keep it really steady and push down against the wheel head. I feel like I'm forcing my right hand under my left. And then go ahead and let the materi material move outwards. I like to wring water over the rim before every pull. You don't want water to settle and stay in the bottom for very long. Remember when you're pulling a wide shallow bowl, you really wanna lean over towards the three o'clock side of the wheel and pull towards your eye. I love my flexible metal rib on the outside. As long as I can feel the clay compressing between my rib and my finger, it works great. In this case, I want to keep the rim almost the exact same uh, size as the wall. Use your sham if you have one. You want to push directly into the wall. Now there's something really beautiful about a, a perfectly round flared bowl. But today we're going to talk about altering. My first alteration I'm going to show you is just using a, a wooden rib. It has a slight edge here. And all I'm going to do is just go ahead and just push straight in. First time you try this, it might feel feel a little strange. But I'm gonna be doing something what I call the iPad pinch. I'm gonna be moving, distorting the bowl forward, and then I'm gonna be moving the clay around this rib. You can see how it did change the, the shape. I'm gonna go ahead and just go straight to the other side. Try to, try to hold the rib really steady when you do this. After the clay gets a little stiffer, you can go ahead and clean up some of those little burrs that are left from from working, but you can see it completely changed the, the way the bowl feels and looks. It's more like a clover shape now. If you would like, you can continue. You can, the rib was on the outside for the first four. What I like to do sometimes is take the rib on the outside and just push ever so slightly out and then do your iPad pinch from the outside in. For me, this this makes it look more architectural. So it takes it from like a an organic clover-like shape to more of a an architectural absent nave of a of a church, for example. 
Okay, go ahead and undercut your foot like normal. We'll let this get leather hard and trim it up later. My altered bowl I made yesterday is perfectly leather hard. You can see this is the bowl I altered with a rim on the outside. It does pose trimming issues. You can see that I have high points and low points. I think it's relatively important to, at first, put it upside down when it's leather hard and check to see if it's, if it's rocking. If it is rocking, which this one isn't, I got lucky, you need to support with little balls of clay to make sure that's shimmied up. Also, you can also see here that there's floating points and points that are touching. This bowl is really only touching on four fragile points. So I really want to just lug it down in those areas. If the bowl is too dry, you can definitely crack it. You can send a little running crack up the side of the bowl and sometimes you won't notice it until it's already best. Until you have a feel for the material, go ahead and give yourself a target. Remember from this line, where it's about quarter inch thick all the way to the rim, to here, that all that material is going to be gone. Some people try to have fun with different edges of the tool. You can just hold it in one spot and create grooves this way. I prefer just to have a nice line quality all the way from the foot to the rim. But that's totally up to you. And you give this a nice small foot to really accentuate the form of the bowl. This type of foot also it kind of leads your eye into the form. Remember when trimming the inside, only trim on the three o'clock side of center, which is right here and hold the tool like a pencil. This puts the blade in the proper cutting position. It's also pretty important to know how much you have to trim. I can't tell you how many students I've seen trim right through the center of their bowl. You can see it really gave it a nice, it just floats it off the table. It's a pretty nice form. Hopefully it'll make it through a bisque and a glaze without any cracks or runs. And we'll be able to eat soup, cereal, or whatever we want out of this.